In the mathematical field of graph theory, we are interested in properties and results pertaining to relationships and connections between objects. The terminology is a little confusing, but we're no longer talking about graphs as charts with axes and variables, but rather structures like this, comprised of nodes or vertices, edges, and sometimes additional information. The edges usually represent the existence of relationships or connections between the nodes. For example, if we use a graph to represent the bridge problem, each edge represents a bridge, each node a landmass. However, we could also represent a social network in this way, where each node represents a person and each edge indicates the two people follow each other or are friends. Although we can have edges that go from a node back to itself, in general, each edge only runs between two nodes. And so if we see two edges overlapping, that doesn't allow new connections to form. In some circumstances, we can also have directed graphs, which might indicate a one-way street or in social media, you can follow someone without them necessarily following you back. So we can already see that what is allowed will often depend on the situation. Later on, we'll also look at situations where you can assign cost or distance to these edges. For example, if the graph represents a train network and we want to indicate the time between any two stations. Now a key idea that makes graph theory very different from geometry is that often the actual position of a node or the length of an arc is meaningless. In solving the Kernisberg problem, it doesn't matter whether we represent the bridges like this, or like this, or like this. All that matters is whether or not any two nodes are connected, and how many times they are connected. So, some of the terms that we have so far are vertices, which can also be referred to as nodes, edges, which sometimes can be referred to as arcs, then we refer to the degree of a vertex as the number of arcs going in or out. And if a node is connected to itself, this counts as two. We can also count faces, as long as the graph is drawn so that none of the edges cross over one another. Then, any region enclosed by edges and vertices is a face. And we also count the outside area as a face. These terms should all be familiar to you if you've studied polyhedrons, and in fact, a number of properties about graphs can be derived from results in 3D geometry.